Can't get enough sports shorts? Tune into Sports Shorts TV on Cox HD Channel 1013, Mondays at 8, Tuesdays at 9, and Etel Channel 4. That's 52 weeks a year to get educated on sports by the best. Joel Davis and Ronnie Rance. Welcome, everyone, to Sports Shorts, presented by LaBerge Casino. Ronnie Rance here with you for the next hour. We've got a couple of great guests. Patrick Coogan joining us, the president and CEO of Sports BR, first half hour. Then we'll talk to Jacob Hester, a little LSU football coming up in the second half hour. But first, uh, a guy who wears many, many hats. Of course, you knew him as a national champion pitcher for the LSU baseball team in 1996 and 1997. And after a long stint in the minor leagues, Patrick moved back here to Baton Rouge and Currently in, what, year two, I guess, of president and CEO of Sports BR. Good times. Yeah, actually, just in my seventh month, actually. Seventh month. Yeah. Seems like two years. <laughs> uh, I, I'd ser- yeah, I'd served on the board prior to, to taking the position, uh, so I've been very familiar with the organization. Uh, but, yeah, we started uh hit the ground running in January of this year, and uh, very happy to be. I mean, it's it's a wonderful organization um, yeah, tell but, the folks about what sports BR does. Yeah, we do we do a lot here for our local community um, in the sports tourism aspect of things. You know, we're charged with the responsibility of creating tourism to our greater capital area uh, using the the mechanism of sporting events to do so. And so we, you know, anytime you see a sporting event outside of you know an LSU or Southern University event. Uh, it, it's probably been touched by us uh, on, on one level or another. And so that's what we do. I mean, we, we you know, go to other uh, organizations and we recruit these people to come to Baton Rouge, bring their events to Baton Rouge. Uh, we help produce them, put them on, incentivize them to come, help with hotels, help with, uh, you know, kind of soup to nuts of, of, the, of the whole process for them. Uh, and, you know, they spend their money here in our community uh, their kids have a great time, and, and they're always wanting to come back. Uh, it, it's been a great uh, scenario for When them. you're out there selling Baton Rouge and South Louisiana to, to these organizations, these events that, quite honestly, could, could go anywhere. You know, right. they, they, yeah. There's a lot of cities that are doing what you're doing and pitching mm-hmm. them to come here, bring their event here. What are some of the big selling points? Well, y- you know, the, the weather is a good thing. Y- you know, although we're sitting here and it's 150 <laughs> degrees outside, and you're probably still sweating from walking <laughs> from the car like I am, uh, but, but our, our climate is, is really good throughout the year. So for sporting events, um, you know, it, it makes us very attractive. Having, you know, a flagship uh, university here and, and some of those facilities that we potentially have access to are very good. Uh, our hotel rates are, are very competitive. Uh, you know, we're not in New York City. We're not in Atlanta. We're not in Houston, and, and you're not paying – Three hundred dollars a night to get into a hotel, so it's very affordable for somebody to come to town here. But we've got a, a great number of organizations um, in, in all the different variety of sports that help participate this and help make it, uh, you know, an attractive um, approach to these organizations to get them to bring their event to Baton Rouge. Well, one of the things that uh, uh, you know, there was a press conference. Uh, uh, about a week ago, and one of the things that you're involved in, uh, the governor was there, the mayor, lieutenant governor, uh, was making the announcement that the College Baseball Hall of Fame would be bringing its annual banquet to Baton Rouge uh, for the first time ever. Right. Um, in the past, I think the College Baseball Hall of Fame started in 2004, mm-hmm. and it was in Lubbock, and right. then the last couple of years, a couple of times was in, I guess, Omaha. No, it's, it's actually been So in, the banquets have always, always been in Lubbock, been in okay. Lubbock Texas. Uh, and so that was an interesting scenario that, that popped on our radar, uh, and, and they approached us, quite honestly. Um, and, and so it's really neat, and, and you're starting to see, and you're in the museum world, so you, you understand all this, the dynamics of how it works, but they're, they're migrating, especially when you're uh, you know, a college hall of fame, regardless of the sport, is they migrate to the hotbed of uh, fan support, uh, and, and where the, the programs that can sustain potentially a facility. Uh, and so they contacted us, quite frankly. Uh, it was quite, right in the first few weeks of, of my tenure at Sports BR. Uh, and, and Jason Penry is a guy who's the, uh, the, the chair of the Night of Champions for the College Baseball Hall of Fame. And he contacted me. He's actually from Walker, Louisiana, and he knows the, the interest that, Baton Rouge has for college baseball and the affinity that they have for the LSU baseball program and what a hotbed of 
fandom it is. And so, you know, th- they brought the idea of us hosting this event um, and, and potentially moving it from Lubbock. So we went down the road with that, uh, and we got the right people behind us. We've got a ton of support from corporate people in the town, uh, the business leaders, and then obviously you saw in the press conference uh, we've got the political leadership behind us as well because they they understand the importance of bringing the attention to, to our state and our city. Um, and, and we're going to kind of parlay that and, and make a big push to try to, you know, to firm up the actual building, the actual College Baseball Hall of Fame, to make it per- permanent in Baton Rouge. Let's go back a little bit. The, uh, Skip Bertman was in that first College Baseball Hall of Fame class, which was 2004 in Lubbock, Texas. And I always was surprised, well, how did it get to Lubbock? And, mm-hmm. you know, in, in any – any business, you follow the money. Right. <laughs> and then at the sure. one point in time, there was going to be a museum built in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, and, and for various reasons, it didn't happen. But, you know, d- explain to us, I guess, the history of it started in 2004 in Lubbock. There's been banquets all of these years. Mm-hmm. They dabbled with Omaha. And here we are in, in Baton Rouge. Walk us through that process. Yeah. So as I understand it in, in, in getting the history of it from the college baseball foundation, which owns the hall of fame, uh, is that Lubbock was always a a placeholder, if you will, for, for the hall of fame. Uh, and it was never intended to be a permanent location there. The idea was when they built TD Ameritrade is that there would be some space and, um, you know, accessibility in TD for... In Omaha. Uh, yeah, in mm-hmm. Omaha for, for the College Baseball Hall of Fame. And that, quite frankly, from what we've been told, hasn't happened. Uh, and, and so they're exploring new options. Uh, they've made it very clear, you know, throughout the baseball community that th- that, that is their intentions. Uh, and, and that's part of the attraction for us to host this event with also that carrot being dangled in front of us that we could actually host this uh, this building here in Baton Rouge. And so we've gotten to the point where Baton Rouge has got to become uh, competitive in this and, and present the, 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 the place that we would like to have it, the, the building we would like to have it, the way we would run it, uh, the st- sustainability model that we would create for this uh, museum and bring it to the, the site location committee uh, and ultimately have them decide that Baton Rouge is indeed the, be- the best place for this. The... So, so Lubbock, as you mentioned, was a placeholder, and guys like Ben McDonald and Todd Walker mm-hmm. and, and Skip Bertman and Eddie Furness were all inducted into the College Baseball Hall of Fame in Lubbock, Texas. Um, do you, is there, first off, are there other cities besides Baton Rouge that, are, that they're talking to and that Baton Rouge is, is I guess, in essence, competing with outside of Omaha uh, to be the home of the College Baseball yeah, Hall we, of Fame? Yeah, we, we know of Omaha for sure, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and, and that's that's no deep secret. Um, right. it, that, that's that's publicly known. We do think that there might be one or two other places that are under consideration, uh, but I don't think. And, and Ronnie, you know this, and and your listeners will know this is that w- with the group that we have created, that once you put a, a goal in front of us, you know it's going to be tough to beat us, and and we are going. Uh, you know, 100 miles an hour towards that goal of hosting, you know, actually having this facility in our state and city. Um, you, you know, the team that, that we've assembled with guys like John Spain and John Davies uh, with the Baton Rouge Area Foundation, once they put their mind to it, you know, it, it's going to be tough to beat us. Um, and, and we just have a lot of factors that, that are very attractive to a group like the College Baseball Foundation for them, you know, to turn us down. So we're, we're very excited about it. So, you know, I think most people's first reaction is, yeah, the College Baseball Hall of Fame should be in Omaha, Nebraska, the home of the College Baseball Hall of Fame. <clears throat> but then when you think about it, mm-hmm. um, there's pluses and minuses to that. Why don't you explain that? Yeah, so one, one, of, one of the pieces of Omaha, and, and we think that, you know, for about a six-week period, Omaha would be a, a slam dunk, home run, the, you know, the whole thing because of it, it becomes for that sliver of time. Yeah, June, you know, July. Right, yeah. the, the, the mecca of, of college baseball. But also they bookend the College World Series with, as you know, a lot of youth tournaments, right? So before the College World Series and then following the College World Series, there's a lot of baseball activity in, in, that, in that area for that time period. Uh, but 
you know, what we look at is, is a 12 month sustainability calendar. And, you know, we think that Baton Rouge is a lot more poised to be able to do something like that from the standpoint of our, you know, we've got baseball weather more months of the year than, um, than, than, than other cities would. Um, and, and also, you know, you've got other, other types of people that come to our town. You know what I mean? You think of like a Mississippi state football weekend, those guys come into town They've got a proud tradition at Mississippi State, and those people would be ecstatic to come to the College Baseball Hall of Fame on a Friday night before they start their, mm-hmm. you know, weekend tailgate facility uh, festivities. You know, along with Arkansas, along with Texas A&M, along with Florida, along with Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. a, a lot of these people that are coming in. Uh, uh, just and and also when you include the amount of youth tournaments that we have that come through the Baton Rouge area on a weekend week basis. Um, you know, starting in March and ending in you know, August. Um, there's just a lot of foot traffic that could be driven through that building. Well, also, you, you just the uh, population driving through, you didn't get I-10, right? I mean, from California yeah. to Florida, you got tons of people driving on I-10, passing through Baton Rouge, and now you give them another reason to stop, uh, you know, if it's in the right location and marketed right and all that sort of thing. So, I mean, I think it's a, a slam dunk. I'd be curious to see, I'm curious to see, what the city of Omaha does, you right. know, in the reaction to, well, wait a minute, you know, you, you're going down to Baton Rouge, oh, and 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 will they rise to the pressure? And all of a sudden, wow, now TD Ameritrade has all this space, right, you know, yeah. that they didn't it's have. It's funny how that stuff you know, kind of works, right? right? Or yeah. is it like if they're going to wave the white flag and go, okay, well, you know, we can't compete with them, right? You know, so I'm curious to see what happens. We're visiting with uh, Patrick Coogan. He's the president and CEO of Sports BR, and a week ago announced that on Saturday, November 2nd, no LSU football that night, Saturday, November 2nd, the College uh, Baseball Hall of Fame will be held at the Baton Rouge River Center. Uh, your tickets are available. We'll talk about all that. Uh, we'll talk about the selection. How, what's the process for selecting the Hall of Famers? When will they announce who's going to be in that class? Are there any LSU folks in consideration for that uh, November 2nd uh, banquet? How do you get tickets? All that and a whole lot more. We're visiting with Patrick Coogan, former LSU national champion. And later on, we'll talk to Jacob Hester about LSU football. Don't go anywhere. everyone. Don't be a victim. Call Accutemp and schedule your maintenance check today. If you're an avid sports fan, then you need to check out the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, located in historic downtown Natchitoches, next to the Chateau St. Denis Hotel and the Natchitoches Convention Center. The Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame is where the rich history of Louisiana sports is told through the pictures, artifacts, and by the legends themselves in video archives. Come to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame and Northwest Louisiana History Museum and visit a world-renowned architectural marvel. For more information and to purchase tickets to the annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame events, visit lasportshall.com backslash purchase. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz family of vans, including the full-size Sprinter and the mid-size Metris. If these are your wingtips, if this is your gourmet latte, then these are your vans. Vans for professionals. Strictly professionals. Best commercial van residual value according to ALG and starting at just $25,995. Mercedes-Benz. Vans. Born to... When you come to Relief Windows, your experience starts here. Or here. Then we come to your home. We measure twice. And then we bring custom windows to your home. We remove your old windows. Install your new windows. Clean our mess. And we make sure you're completely satisfied. And all of this before you pay a dime. And at Relief Windows, our number one product is customer satisfaction. Heater outages hurt everyone. Don't be a victim. Call Accutemp and schedule your maintenance check today.
enough sports shorts, tune into Sports Shorts TV on Cox HD Channel 1013, Mondays at 8, Tuesdays at 9, and Etel Channel 4. That's 52 weeks a year to get educated on sports by the best. Joel Davis and Ronnie Rance. Welcome back, everyone, to Sports Shorts presented by LaBerge Casino. A lot of great stuff going on at LaBerge. Uh, great shows and concerts coming up this, uh, this fall. Of course, no better place to be on a Friday night before an LSU home football game than LaBerge Casino. Not only do they have shows, the place is packed. A lot of fans from other schools as well. Um, we know Better Than Ezra is going to be coming uh, again this fall. Brian McKnight, yes. Oh, wow. Love me some Brian McKnight. He'll be coming. That was my guy back yeah, in the day. Yeah, Brian McKnight. Yeah. Uh, if you do Brian McKnight Pandora. Was that after the love was gone? Brian McKnight. No, no, that was the James Ingram. Uh, one, it's like a dream come yeah. true. Two. Yeah, that's yeah. Brian McKnight. Um, he's he's fantastic. Saw him at the saw him at another casino about three, four years ago, and he blew my mind. So he's great. Looking forward to seeing him. They got a lot of country acts coming up. Aaron Neville again doing his Christmas show in December. So a lot of great things on the horizon. Uh, over at LaBerge Casino, they had the Bee Gees Tribute Band this past week. Oh, wow. You're into that. They were great. Uh, so go check them out. Go to Ticketmaster.com to get all your tickets, or you can go to the Sundry Store inside the LaBerge Casino and, uh, and and check it out as well. We're visiting with Patrick Coogan, the president and CEO of Sports BR. We'll have Jacob Hester on a little bit later, talk LSU football. Uh, the big announcement came out down last week that on, on Saturday, November 2nd, the College Baseball Hall of Fame banquet will be held right here in Baton Rouge. Now, tickets on sale yet? or They're, they're not on sale yet, but you no. can RSVP. Um, and I've pulled it up right here because I forget, but it's cbfnightofchampions.org. CBF, college baseball, cbfnightofchampions.org. cbfnightofchampions.org. Uh, there you go. Thank and, you, Paul. Uh, yeah, and you go. can RSVP for that um, and – you know, we'll send out the notifications when tickets are available. I mean, we've had a tremendous amount. You know, just the first day of the, the press conference, uh, we had over 100 requests for tickets mm-hmm. just on that day. And we're planning for 500 people. And so for the first day <laughs> when you get 100, uh, that, that was, yeah, yeah, that was pretty exciting. You'll have a lot more than 500. Yeah, no question I, I think that. so. No question about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, uh, so when will the class be announced? When will we know who's so going to be in that class? We're still in the uh, in the voting period. The ballots are still open. August nineteenth is the the deadline, and and when the uh, voting closes. Um, and so I, I heard you allude to would there be any LSU players? No, there's nobody there, on the ballot. There's nobody on the ballot okay. this year. Uh, and, and there's a number of reasons that the the stipulations and and how you're eligible. Um, you know, a lot of people ask about Coach Maneri. Uh, he's been voted into 300 other Hall of Fames. He's not in this Hall of Fame yet, right? Uh, his father is. Demi is is in this Hall of Fame. You have to be over se- – if you're an active coach, over you have 70. to be over 70 mm-hmm. while you're still coaching to, to even be eligible. So, uh, you know, he's a, he's a can't-miss kind of guy for this once he hits that threshold or, or retires. Uh, so, so Coach Maneri is not in this one yet, but he's very proud of the fact that his father, Demi, is in, in this one. Uh, the, the, the one that I, I think most people here will be most excited about in the CB inducted, uh, who's eligible for the first time this year, is Mike Martin, uh, obviously the, the longtime coach at Florida State. Uh, you know, I think LSU fans took an affinity towards him, even though they knocked LSU out of the postseason this year. Uh, what a wonderful story he was, and, and to see him – come into to Alex Box, and he was obviously celebrated. And, um, you know, uh, no LSU fan wants to see their, their team lose. But, you know, I think if you reach deep into, into your heart and, and, and get emotional about things, you're like, well, if, if it's going to happen, I'd like it to be that guy. And, he, you know, such a wonderful ambassador for the sport of college baseball. Uh, and, and so he's, he, he would eventually be the headliner for this, uh, for this night uh, in November. Um, what's, do you know the qualifications for a player? You know, what, is it just, Hey, you had, you know, is there some structure like in, in, in the Louisiana sports hall of fame, right? There are certain rules, right. two years of high school in Louisiana or two years college, uh, uh, or, uh, five years professionally in the state. So is, is there anything like that? Yeah. I, I don't know the specifics. Obviously I don't, I don't sit on the, the governing board of, of the people that select these type things. 
Uh, but th- there are stipulations as if you're, as we mentioned, if you're a current coach, uh, that you have to be 70 years or older. But this covers, Ronnie, the, the universe of college mm-hmm. baseball. So it, it would include not only players, um, coaches, administrators potentially, uh, and people that have made a great impact. Um, and, and you'll find this funny being a, a former pitcher um, is, is that, and, and I laugh when it's told me, but also, there hadn't been one elected yet, but umpires are eligible <laughs> to be nominated and, and elected, I guess, in, into the Hall of Fame. Um, That'd be the first person that would be introduced at the banquet and the crowd would boo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, who loves and, an and umpire, I, right? I, right, and you got to get the right guy, right. and you would hope that he'd wear the dark glasses and come out with a, a, right. a dog or a CNK, right. you know. Um, but, yeah, it, to me, that, that's, that's really humorous, the fact that they would uh, – potentially entertain the idea of having an umpire and besides the Hall of Fame. uh mike martin are there any other household names i, I, guess, I, on I the don't ballot? know um you know they're a little secretive about oh, okay. this um they, they did share the mike martin thing with mm-hmm. me i have not seen the ballot in fact i had spoken with coach burtman at the the press conference he had just received his ballot and he was you know he'll tell us stuff mm-hmm. but he, even he was kind of you know didn't want to say who was on the ballot uh you know i guess out of respect for for people who may or may not make it. Um, so we, we, we really, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, typically on a given year, there's four to 10 people potentially inducted into the hall of fame. Uh, and so we've got to prepare for, you know, X many slots until we actually know after the August 19th deadline. Well, that is going to be, uh, some, some fun, fun stuff, uh, coming up, uh, August 19th, the deadline. We'll find out soon thereafter. Who's going to be into the uh, the Hall of Fame class? Obviously, Mike Martin will be in. There's no way, way he won't. So that'll be interesting. Do you know if there are other events outside of just the banquet? The, is there, that... there, there are. There, mm-hmm. there are a lot of events, actually, and that's part of the planning mm-hmm. process and part of the thing we had to go through to to bid for this and, and, and to pitch it to the, to the foundation. Um, n- not m- Let's just say outside of the, the main banquet, that, that's the one that's open to the public. Um, there, there are events to entertain the inductees gotcha. and award winners. Those are more family and VIP that, dominated. Uh, that's right. Mm-hmm. And one, one thing w- I think we failed to mention here is not only is it the inductees um, to the Hall of Fame, but this is also the, the college baseball award ceremony as well. So uh, there, there will be some you know, current college players or I guess maybe not current if they get, were drafted and, and they're gone. Uh, the Brooks Wallace Award, which is the, the best shortstop, which – uh, Alex Bregman won a, a few years back. The John Olerud Two-Way Player of the Year Award is uh, presented at this. The Skip Bertman Coach of the Year Award is uh, presented at this, along with uh, n- notoriety for teams throughout college baseball. And we're talking from D1 uh, to D2 to D3 to uh, junior colleges, mm-hmm. the different ranks, uh, NAIA recognition for national champions and that. And so they'll, those schools will have representation at this on, event On those well. specialty awards that you mentioned, the Brooks Wallace, the Skip Bertman awards, mm-hmm. uh, do those winners already know? They do. Okay, and, so and they the, already know yeah, who they it, are. Right. Okay, so they'll just receive their award that, and be recognized that, that, that. That's correct. Uh, okay. there, there's no spoiler alert, right, alert, right. alert there. <laughs> and some people may recognize the name Gray Kessinger, the great shortstop mm-hmm. from Ole Miss. Our, mm-hmm. you know, our friend uh, Mike Bianco was his coach, so I – anticipate that he'll be here for mm-hmm. that that thing he'll be recognized for winning the brooks wallace award he's patrick coogan i'm ronnie rance talking a, a lot about a very special event november 2nd uh, the college uh baseball hall of fame uh, it's going to be a fantastic deal um the the uh l- let's look ahead i mean obviously by the way november 2nd you guys are oh, taking on fast. a challenge yeah, I mean, yeah. gosh, it, I mean, it is going to be here before you know it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, best of luck yeah. there. No, guy. and look, you know. we, we've got a great team around yeah. us. And we knew when we, you know, kind of bit this Picked off this that on, it, yeah. it was it was going to be a bear. Uh, but we've got, had tremendous support from the city, the facilities, and all that. So it, it's been be a great. minute, right, since they had their last banquet. Like it hasn't been on the calendar. The same. It used to be, if I remember correctly, Fourth of July ish right. weekend in in in. in in Lubbock, Texas, and then they kind of got away from that a little bit. Yeah, well, typically it it, it does f- flow f- out of the college baseball season and into this. Uh, there were some pros and cons of, of that. 
uh, from the standpoint of if you have award winners or inductees that are still in the game, you know, obviously they're playing at that point of the season. You know, if, if a guy's in pro ball, he may not get be able to get away and, and actually attend it. So um, this year we, we've moved it to November. Uh, one, because, you know, the bidding process to get it here was um, was pushed back a little bit, but also uh, to allow those people to be able to come. So a guy like Gray Kessinger, who's out playing pro ball, uh, can be through with his season and now can actually come, whereas before – uh, he was either negotiating. He was, yeah, he was at the mercy of the team. Yeah, he or he was for. in rookie ball. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it does make it a little bit. You know, a lot of times some of these guys who get inducted into the Hall of Fame are current uh, pro pro coaches, right? They m- might be in the big leagues. They might be a, a roving instructor or a pitching coordinator with an organization, and it's tough for them to get away in the month of June or July to where now that, you know, it makes a lot more sense. And we're, we're going to make a decision for – subsequent years down the road on if we're going to you know follow the the November time frame or, or we're going to revert back to the to, to the June July schedule. Well, I'll say this if if there's ever a organization that won't let off a coach or player to go get inducted into the College Baseball Hall of Fame for 2 days, I mean you you need to try to find a new boss cause, <laughs> But I mean I know it happens, Look, but you, that's you've pretty you've been pretty there awful. and and you try to go to a, a wedding of a, a you know a close family member and it's a hard no right, right out of the gate right um, you know so sometimes they're you know amicable to those types of things but other times you, it, it's just a no you got to play kid as we look to the future and uh, and we look to try to uh, make Baton Rouge the permanent home for the College Baseball Hall of Fame uh, take us through that process take us through that timeline what's next. So the next step for us with our working group here in Baton Rouge is uh, by the end of the month, we will have gone to Atlanta. Uh, we're going to go see the College Football Hall of Fame, obviously. That's, that's kind of the, the world-class um, site of, of museums right now in, in this space. Uh, so we're going to go see that. And also the head of the site selection committee is in Atlanta, Georgia, just coincidentally, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and so we will meet with a group of those folks there at that time, um, and and make our push and you know give a give them the why Baton Rouge story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that that'll be a very important factor for us. Uh, I've already toured Knoxville, Tennessee, where the Women's uh, Basketball Hall of Fame is, um, and there there are other places that that we would like to attend. But in mass as a group, we will all attend. Um, or, or, or go visit uh, Atlanta to see that and, and also visit with the site selection committee. So we've got our homework to do. Uh, we're obviously very prepared for, very excited to present that to, to the site selection committee. Um, you know, they, they've been excited about our excitement here in Baton Rouge. They can't believe the amount of support, uh, you know, just from the fact that we had the governor, lieutenant governor, mayor, mm-hmm. All the support. We had a packed room at the, you know, at the governor's press room uh, a week ago today for that announcement, uh, and and they're very attuned to that. That that means uh, a lot. No it, it really does. Yeah. Um, and Mike Gustafson, who is the 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 head of the, the College Baseball Foundation, obviously was here with us at the podium, and he returned that message to you know to his board, uh, and and I've I've heard nothing but great things back from those people heck i was even walking my, uh, my son into his uh two-year-old classroom this morning had a guy stop me in the hallway and said look this is great for baton Rouge. appreciate what you're doing so the community's behind it not only the politicians but you know the baseball fans and, and the community in general are behind it and, and we're truly grateful we think it'll be a wonderful thing you, you when you go as a group in mass to uh to atlanta to kind of pitch why baton rouge uh provided things go well mm-hmm. um and what's realistic timeline wise what's what's realistic yeah. for what happens after september that, that's a great question so in in our mind we we've and and this isn't the the foundations uh the college baseball foundations timeline it, it it's one that we've kind of created in our own minds is we would love for november 2nd at that banquet for them to make this announcement and make, make it, it official public. yeah um so that's our goal so you, you obviously know if you think November's coming fast for a banquet, 
you ought to see what it's how fast it's right. coming for a building as well. Right. Uh, so we have these steps in place to 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 go work for that uh, and and to to try to make our push to get them comfortable enough to make Baton Rouge that that permanent home, uh, which would be you know uh, I think it would be a win for our city, our state, um, our citizens, um, and 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 just the. The, the baseball fans out there, not only baseball fans, but sporting fans. I mean, look, I, I really don't have a whole lot of interest in, in women's basketball, but I was intrigued when I went to the, the, the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. It was incredible to see all that kind of stuff, see the history, and you recognize the people, the, the Simone Augustus and, and, you know, the, the former Sue Gunner, the former LSU, the people you recognize, even if it's not a sport that you, you really like or are or, or, or familiar with, you really like it, and you know I went there as part of a separate event, and that that facility was just hosting an event that night, and so you're attracting all these people, and so that that's something that this facility like this would do for Baton Rouge. It's not only the the the, the dad and son that would go on a Saturday morning and all the and, business cocktail hour receptions and yeah, things. I that mean, you home, would have yeah, I mean it's meetings and yeah, all that. it's yeah. fantastic, and it, it's a different kind of place than you know the 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 things that you used to, or, mm-hmm. hey, let's don't go meet at Starbucks. Let's go to the coffee shop at the, the Hall of Fame. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's it's really dynamic. Um, we think it's a home run. Don't pardon the pun because mm-hmm. I meant to do mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, we think it's a, a great win for, for the city and the state. Well, there's no question that uh, Baton Rouge would be the perfect fit. Uh, you know, let's uh, fingers crossed everything goes well. I know that you guys are going to put your best foot forward. I just hope that uh, Omaha's sleeping a little bit. <laughs> you know, yeah. because, because to me, that's the only place that, that can give uh, Baton Rouge a run for their money is if all of a sudden they just go, you know, yeah, we're going to give left field to the college yeah. baseball. Well, you, you know, us guys from Baton Rouge, we're, we're not afraid to compete. And, <laughs> you know, br- bring them all on. We're, we're ready to go. And, we, we think we are the best spot for it, and we're going to prove that. Well, I think you'll blow away that 500 number, no question, for that November 2nd banquet that's going to be going on. Uh, one more time, let's put up, uh, put up on the screen there, Paul, the, the information. It's the National College Baseball Hall of Fame, Night of Champions. It's November the 2nd. And that, uh, that website, uh, Patrick, uh, wh- where is it? What, what is the uh, email or whatever? Uh, it is cbfnightofchampions.org. CBF college baseball foundation night of champions.org go there register for the tickets and then they'll notify you in a couple of weeks when it's all official who the class is and prices and times and all that sort of thing hey jumbo you remember uh when when you played for coach burtman he always said you got to mention your wife yeah right (laughs) well i'm going to mention muso and and paul (laughs) o'neill and tell them thank you right (laughs) these guys do a heck of a job and make me look uglier, uglier than I am, by, by uh, which the, is by, hard to do. By the way, but, I don't mention, great job with the websites. I, I don't mention them as much because if uh, they get a lot of pub, by the way, on the other shows, you know, Moscona's show. I mean, these guys are becoming superstars. Yeah. So got to be careful. You know, with their heads to get too big. They're, they're, they're doing a great job. Um, one last thing before I let you go. Your day job, of course, president and CEO of Sports BR. Yeah. You guys have events coming left and right. Now, it seems like it's about time for a bowling event. Give me, give me the update on that because that one's – we've had these national bowling yeah. events that come to Baton Rouge every so often, and they, they do tremendous economic yeah. impact for the city. Yes. When's the next one? Uh, 2024, actually. Okay. So, you know, we're kind of in a rotation, and, and they move it around. Uh, we'll actually be attending – we'll be going to Jackson, Mississippi this coming Saturday night to attend an event for bowling um, and uh, you know, which is part of a lead up to a qualifier to the right. national event. Right. Uh, but we're always in partic- participation for those types of things. Yeah. Uh, but the national event won't be back in Baton Rouge till 2024. Okay. Uh, and you know, we're, we're in a little bit of a lull in, in planning time for us as, as an organization. We had a, you know, a, a jam packed summer with uh, regional soccer here, which had a tremendous economic impact on our city. Uh, the restaurants were packed. The hotels were packed. Marucci uh, World Series. Marucci World Series was was the second largest event that we had this summer. Uh, same thing. Uh, and, and, you know, there, there was just a lot of great events. The economic, economic impact that we've had, you know, for the city has already exceeded for this calendar year than any calendar year we've done ever 
the, the last thing before I let you go, the, the event I'm most excited about that's on the horizon is Quibitch. The Quibitch it's, National it, Championship? What is that now? It's Quidditch. Quidditch. With, with Quidditch. A, with a D. Okay. So Harry Potter fans, yes, the same Quidditch. That's right. From the Harry Potter movies, the National Quidditch Championships are going to be in Baton Rouge. It's where these guys, run, guys and gals run around with a broomstick between their legs right. and play Quidditch from the movie. Yeah. But there's a national championship for this. There is. It's a, it, apparently, it's a huge sport. Um, when is that? When is it? Yeah, when is that? Uh, it, it'll schedule? be next February. Okay, so February 2020. All right. All right. Uh, wow. And so the first time I ever saw it is my, my kids go to U High, and you know when I loop back around out of carpool, you know, I pass by the parade grounds and I see these kids and uh, like, I'm almost covering my children's eyes so they can't see what's going on. Like, right, right. I'm thinking there are some meth heads right. carrying brooms Running out on around the parade. with sticks between and their legs. Yeah. Beating bang, each other. Banging each other. Yeah. Right. Uh, and my son's like, no, that's Quidditch. And I'm like, uh, all right. That's you got a, me. It's, what it, is it's it? a thing, right? Yeah. And it's a, it, it, it's a Harry Potter inspired sport. Um, like LSU has a team. That, a, a, a well-known team. I mean, they're like really good. They're like guys. Wow. Um, and so Quidditch uh, approached us because of, uh, you know, L- the popularity at LSU with their club team and kind of the, the I-10, I-12 corridor. They've hosted in Texas and in Florida. Gotcha. And, you know, because of budgets and things, some Florida teams can't make it to Texas and Texas right. teams can't make it to Florida. They decided, hey, let's find a, a middle ground for that, and they chose Baton Rouge, and um, that'll be held out at the the UREC on River Road uh, in February, and, and it'll be a tremendous yeah, event. That's right yeah. next to the LSU you softball wouldn't imagine how many, stadium. Yeah, right there on uh, out mm-hmm. on River Road, uh, just past Alex Box. As soon as you hit the river, and you you wouldn't imagine the numbers that this thing's going to bring. I mean, it's it's. It's teams from all over the country. I, when yeah. I Googled it, when I heard about it, I Googled it, and UCLA has a Quidditch mm-hmm. team, mm-hmm. And, and, and I saw the video of them. I mean, it's, it's pretty pretty incredible. So, yeah, it's not just the main sports right. that you're dealing with at Sports BR. It's, it's everything else as well. So thanks for the time, Patrick. Really excited about the future. Uh, November the 2nd, Louisiana, uh, the, the College Baseball Hall of Fame banquet's going to be going on, a lot of great events around that. Uh, and hopefully a museum to come in the future. He's Patrick Coogan, President and CEO of Sports BR. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll visit with Jacob Hester to talk a little LSU football. Don't go anywhere. hurt everyone. Don't be a victim. Call Accutem and schedule your maintenance check today. If you're an avid sports fan, then you need to check out the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, located in historic downtown Natchitoches, next to the Chateau St. Denis Hotel and the Natchitoches Convention Center. The Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame is where the rich history of Louisiana sports is told through the pictures, artifacts, and by the legends themselves in video archives. Come to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame and Northwest Louisiana History Museum and visit a world-renowned architectural marvel. For more information and to purchase tickets to the annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame events, visit lasportshall.com backslash purchase. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz family of vans, including the full-size Sprinter and the mid-size Metris. If these are your wingtips, if this is your gourmet latte, then these are your vans. Vans for professionals. Strictly professionals. Best commercial van residual value, according to ALG, and starting at just $25,995. Mercedes-Benz. Vans. Born to... When you come to Relief Windows, your experience starts here. Or here. Then we come to your home. We measure twice. And then we bring custom windows to your home. We remove your old windows. Install your new windows. Clean our mess. And we make sure you're completely satisfied. 
And all of this before you pay a dime. And at Relief Windows, our number one product is customer satisfaction. Relief Windows! <laughs> Heater outages hurt everyone. <laughs> Don't be a victim. Call AccuTemp and schedule your maintenance check today. Can't get enough sports shorts? Tune into Sports Shorts TV on Cox HD Channel 1013, Mondays at 8, Tuesdays at 9, and ETEL Channel 4. That's 52 weeks a year to get educated on sports by the best. Joel Davis and Ronnie Rance. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Sports Shorts presented by LaBerge Casino. Uh, LaBerge, all kind of great events coming up this fall. If you download the LaBerge Baton Rouge app on your phone, uh, you can check out all the great concerts they've got coming up. Got Brian McKnight in November, Better Than Ezra, uh, Parish County Line, all kind of great acts over there this fall, Friday nights before LSU home football games. It's the place to be, uh, La Berge, Baton Rouge. Joining me, Jacob Hester, former LSU Tiger and a LSU insider because you got a chance to be one of the few f eyes uh, at the first LSU scrimmage this past uh, weekend and just some general overall takeaway from it. Yeah, the first scrimmage is always going to be won by the defense. It doesn't really matter what level of football you're on. That's always going to happen. So no surprise there when Coach O comes out and says the defense won the scrimmage. Obviously, you had some injuries. I don't think anything's major. I don't think Baton Rouge needs to melt down. Everybody <laughs> no will, Joe Burrow. What's right, going on right. with Joe Everybody Burrow? Everybody will be okay. You know, Joe was throwing on the side. So it's just being, you know, it's more precautious than anything, right? So no worries there, in my opinion. Uh, a couple of standouts for me. I think the big standout was Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase continues to just make plays after the catch. I mean, really high-pointing the ball, doing some different things. And and Derek Stingley had some success as well. I mean, we keep saying his name, and we keep right. asking, you know, well, give me another name besides Derek Stingley. But if he keeps making plays, that's the only name you're going to get. And so yeah. he had a couple interceptions, looked really nice. Uh, Miles Brennan, you know, look, I think LSU put a video out there, showed him hitting Jamar Chase deep. It was a perfect throw. And so – Yes, you want Joe Burrow there. You want him getting those reps, but you also have to remember you're getting Miles some big time reps that mm -hmm. if he has to play this year, those will go a long way. How many plays, snaps, whatever are we talking about in the scrimmage this past weekend? Well, some of it is situational, you know, and so everything's going to be different. You're going to have different downs and, and distances and stuff like that. And you're also going to try and practice, you know, every situation you can, special teams wise, too. So, you know, I, I don't know what the what the exact number of plays was, but I would say, I mean, your one's got some big time. I mean, you're talking 40 reps or something, mm -hmm. you know, to that nature. And so they were getting after. I mean, they were out there for a long time. It was a hot Louisiana summer day, but, uh, you know, there was flashes of, of guys for sure. Overall, I think Michael Divinity at his linebacker position, a new position for him, is going to be really good. And, I, look, I was a guy asking, okay, well, why do you move him? Right, you know, what's the purpose so, so of moving enough. him? Because at the end of last year, he had a lot of success. Well, you're looking for leadership at that position. You lose Devin White, one of the best leaders to ever play at LSU. Caleb Vaughn's coming back, and so he can be your outside edge rusher. I think uh, you had you know Ray Thornton, Andre Anthony looked really good in the spring, looked even better in the summer. So they're you know you're able to move Michael Divinity to a different position, and you know things that we don't think about. Well, he's rushing you know a gap, b gap. He's coming off the edge. He can do a lot of different things, and you get Michael Divinity one on one with a guard. Well, he's going to be way more athletic than that guard. He's going to be able to put those pass rush moves on that guy, and he had a lot of success Saturday too. Um, you mentioned Derek Stingley uh, Jr. Um, did you get to see him in the kick game at all? I mean, I know you said he had DB, but was yeah, he doing anything? Yeah, he, look, I, I think team? I think he's going to have every opportunity to be the punt returner. I mean, I think that's something that Coach O's been pretty upfront about. And you're going to have you know three or four guys fighting for that position. They've got to get more out of that position than they did a year ago, Greg McMahon said that, Coach O said that, and they're looking for a dynamic playmaker because, like, LSU's had some big-time playmakers back there. I mean, DJ Chark, you can go to Trey White, Trenton Holiday, Buster Davis. I mean, you can go Chad Jones. You need that guy back there that he might not, you know, bring it back to the house, 
you know, four times next year, but he always has that threat. Um, the thing I was most interested in was offensive line. So out of, out of the 40, 50 plays you saw with the ones, uh, offensive line, defensive line, who would you give the advantage to? Well, like I said, one. in the defensive front, uh, I thought had a really good day. You had some injuries on the offensive line as far as guys not practicing, and so that obviously hurt the two deep. I thought the edge rushers did a really nice job. Uh, I think Austin Deculus continues to grow. He knows where he's got to be, and uh, he's a guy that has improved, uh, especially in the run game. I think he's done a really nice job, but they just got to continue to get better because they have been better, but the defense had the edge on Saturday. Like I said, and that's not – you know, that's not out of the ordinary for a first scrimmage. But those guys want to continue to get better. Sadiq Charles wants to stay healthy, wants to be the player that he was his freshman year. And so I think they're getting better. They're not there yet. And uh, hopefully by the time you strap it up August 31st, you feel better about it. There was a big article uh, yesterday or the day before whatever about, about Charles uh, and his struggles last year with injury yeah. and his play and the whole nine and that finally he's healthy. You know, finally uh, the, the, the calendar turned to 2019 and it's starting to come together for him for a lot of different ways. Do you see a difference, Sadiq Charles? Can you tell that his game is raised to another level? Yeah, I think last year he just lost some of his confidence. I, I think because of the injury, he wasn't as confident as he was his freshman year. His freshman year, he came in here as a guard, and all of a sudden you have some injuries. Well, he's out there playing tackle. I believe it was uh, you know K.J. Malone, I believe, who got injured. And so he moves to tackle and really excels. I mean, he's a guy, as a true freshman, was a left tackle for a good football team. And so – Last year, he gets hurt. He knows how well he played that freshman year, and he lost his confidence, in my opinion. Well, he's gained that back, and now he's walking around. He's got smiles on his face, and he realizes, okay, I had to be better. He's getting better, and you can tell the difference. We're going to uh, take a time out, run behind in a break. We'll take a break. We'll come back with Jacob Hester to talk to him about uh, the upcoming season and some thoughts. Uh, week two, Texas right around the corner, and what else she's got to do to get ready for that big matchup. Sports Shorts presented by LaBears. We'll be back right after this. Hurt everyone. Don't be a victim. Call Accutem and schedule your maintenance check today. If you're an avid sports fan, then you need to check out the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, located in historic downtown Natchitoches, next to the Chateau St. Denis Hotel and the Natchitoches Convention Center. The Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame is where the rich history of Louisiana sports is told through the pictures, artifacts, and by the legends themselves in video archives. Come to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame and Northwest Louisiana History Museum and visit a world-renowned architectural marvel. For more information and to purchase tickets to the annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame events, visit lasportshall.com backslash purchase. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz family of vans, including the full-size Sprinter and the mid-size Metris. If these are your wingtips, if this is your gourmet latte, then these are your vans. Vans for professionals. Strictly professionals. Best commercial van residual value according to ALG and starting at just $25,995. Mercedes-Benz. Vans. Born to when you come to Relief Windows, your experience starts here. Or here. Then we come to your home. We measure twice. And then we bring custom windows to your home. We remove your old windows. Install your new windows. Clean our mess. And we make sure you're completely satisfied. And all of this before you pay a dime. And at Relief Windows, our number one product is customer satisfaction. Relief. Heater outages hurt everyone. Don't be a victim. Call Accutemp and schedule your maintenance check today.
can't get enough sports shorts, tune into Sports Shorts TV on Cox HD Channel 1013, Mondays at 8, Tuesdays at 9, and ETEL Channel 4. That's 52 weeks a year to get educated on sports by the best. Joel Davis and Ronnie Rance. Welcome back, everyone, to Sports Shorts. Thanks to Patrick Coogan of uh, Sports BR, who joined us in the first half hour of the show. Um, I know you, you know, doing, doing radio every day in Baton Rouge, you know about Patrick's work over at Sports BR. Pretty exciting stuff, man, that the College Baseball Hall of Fame is coming to Baton Rouge, the, the banquet this year, which Mike Martin will be in that class. Right. He's up for nomination. That will be a slam dunk. Um, but also the potential for the museum to right. actually be here. I mean, it's a big deal. No, it'd, it'd be really outstanding for us to get it. But look, I, I feel like we're the mecca of college baseball. I mean, when you think college baseball, you think LSU, you think – the old box, the new box. You think Skip and, and Coach Maneri and the national championship. So it's a good fit for me. I mean, I, I know you're pretty partial to a museum up in Natchitoches, <laughs> but it'd be, it'd be good to have another museum here It'd be here nice. In I mean, hey, look, the World War II Museum, it got voted the number two museum in the in the country. Right, yeah. Uh, behind, like, the Smithsonian. Yeah. Uh, and then you'd have potentially the College Baseball Hall of Fame and, of course, the, you know, award-winning Louisiana Sports <laughs> Hall of Fame. So it'd be, it's just the Louisiana's the and museum And the whole capital. state covered. Right, exactly, I mean, north, north to top to bottom. Yeah. But uh, they're going uh, – but, but Patrick mentioned how a team of folks are going over to Atlanta at the end of September to kind of pitch the College Baseball Hall of Fame on why they should build a museum in Baton Rouge. But they're also going to tour the College Football right. Hall of Fame over there, which I know you've been to. I mean, that facility, I mean, it's $75, $80 million. It's unbelievable. Oh, it's outstanding. They had SEC Media Days there, not this year, but last year, and it was awesome. It was really my first time to go check it out. Uh, they've got a lot of cool stuff. I mean, the helmet wall, the whole deal. But, look, I, I think that um, if you can bring something even close to that to Baton Rouge, mm-hmm. I think it would be an outstanding deal. And, look, I mean, we've got Marucci here. I mean, we've got the Marucci World Series. You've got LSU Baseball. I mean, there's a ton of people that would love to see the College Baseball Hall of Fame here. And, plus, you know, I-10 running right through Baton Rouge. I mean, you know, you think of all the travel ball teams yeah. and all the families from Texas to Florida – that are constantly drive passing through Baton Rouge on their way to and from tournaments, tournaments here, tournaments in other yeah. places. If you've got a museum, college baseball, a museum here, those people are going to stop. Yeah. They're going to stop once a year. So it's going to be exciting to see what happens. Um, LSU football, uh, we're, we, the whole world is starting to eyeball and look at that second week of the right. season. You know, LSU at Texas. It, who's the game bigger for? Is it bigger for Texas or bigger for LSU? I go back and forth. I'm like Switzerland on this thing. I can't pick a side. It's um, for LSU. Obviously, you just don't have much room for error because if you lose that game, I mean, you still got Alabama, Auburn, A and M. I mean, you still got Florida. You've got some big time opponents. If you're Texas, I mean, it'd be your staple win. I definitely think that. But when you talk about losing that, they could probably lose that game. And if they beat Oklahoma, they win the Big Twelve. I think their road's easier. If they lost it, they'd have a way to get back if they were the Big 12 champion. For LSU, just look in the conference you play in, the SEC. And that's why some of these teams don't play these non-conference matchups. Now, I'm glad LSU does. Mm-hmm. I love them. I, I love the on-campus uh, against a non-conference uh, opponent. So, for me, I think LSU probably has more to lose if they lose the game. But um, I think that when you look at it, it, it's it's a game that I would like LSU. I'd favor LSU, even though it's on the road. I, I like where LSU's at. I like how they match up with Texas, and so there's going to be a lot of talk about that game. By the way, if you can, if you got any extra tickets, you get a hold of. I'd, I'd love to get them from you because I mean, everybody I was about to say, wait, don't you get like a credential? Well, no, no. I mean, I get a credential. Oh, okay. I'll be there, but I, I mean, yeah. there's a secondary market coach that I could use some help on. I mean, I don't know about you. I mean, I'm sure yeah. you've gotten hit on by a million people. I've sure. had a million text messages. You know, uh, hey, you know, if you got any tickets available, I'll buy some. I'm like, yeah, I mean, there's tickets available, thousand dollars a piece. Right. You want a thousand dollar a piece tickets? I mean, you can get them. Uh, I, I agree with you. I think, I, I think, I think the game is probably bigger for LSU because I think it, in order for them to be in the top four, they can have a loss and be in the top yeah. four. Don't know they can have two losses and be in the top four. And let's face it, the gauntlet that LSU has, it's unlikely they're going to go undefeated. They're going to stumble somewhere along the, along the road, and most people are going to think it's at Alabama. So if you figure that the Alabama loss is going to happen, you can't have a second one, right? Whereas if Texas loses to LSU, you mentioned it, they can, they can still win the Big 12 a lot easier than LSU can run the gauntlet. And I always feel like if you lose a non-conference game, I feel like that hurts you more too. And so, you know, 
if you lose a conference game, it's on the road, like you mentioned. I mean, I, I think that's like, okay, well, you know, they won all these other games on the road against whoever. That's always going to be tough, whatever. But when you lose a non-conference game, I feel like that always hurts you more. And so it's, it's a big matchup. It's a matchup between, in my opinion, it's going to be two probably top eight teams in the country. And look, and, and Texas is at that point where they're at is – yeah, are they back yet? Are they real contenders? Are they a year away? And so this game to them is a game where if they lose, it's like, oh, well, Texas just isn't back yet. And if they win, it's like, oh, Texas is back. And so they don't really have too much to lose. If LSU, I mean, LSU talking about championship this season, right? You're talking about all the guys they've got coming back, all the guys they didn't lose to the NFL draft. And so I think it means a ton to LSU where Texas is a little bit playing with house money. About, uh, about 40 seconds left. Joe Burrow, your thoughts on him. Coach O said after the scrimmage that we're not the yeah. same team without Joe in the field. Right. And I think Miles made strides. And so I don't think that's a dig on Miles. I think it shows you what Joe Burrow means to this team. Uh, you saw it at the end of last year, really after the Auburn game last year, exactly whose team this was. It was Joe Burrow's team. And this team will go as far as Joe takes him. I don't think there's any doubt about that. You can check out Jacob Hester every Monday through Friday, 1 to 3, on ESPN Radio in Baton Rouge and also up in Shreveport. He's all over. Serious. I mean, what, what, I mean, what else are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I mean, Cox Sports TV. The more Cox you can Sports do it. I've got TV. four children, so the more you can <laughs> Skip do Skip Bertman told us that in 1991 before we won the national championship. Guys, we've got to get to Omaha. We've got to fill the camps. That's right. I've got four daughters. They're expensive. That's so right. He's got all his I, weddings to pay for. So I, I get it. I get what yeah. you're covering. Thank you, man. Jacob Hester, Patrick Coogan joined us earlier from Sports BR. Have a great week, everybody. Sports Shorts every Monday presented by LaBerge. hurt everyone. Don't be a victim. Call Accutemp and schedule your maintenance check today. If you're an avid sports fan, then you need to check out the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, located in historic downtown Natchitoches, next to the Chateau St. Denis Hotel and the Natchitoches Convention Center. The Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame is where the rich history of Louisiana sports is told through the pictures, artifacts, and by the legends themselves in video archives. Come to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame and Northwest Louisiana History Museum and visit a world-renowned architectural marvel. For more information and to purchase tickets to the annual Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame events, visit lasportshall.com backslash purchase. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz family of vans, including the full-size Sprinter and the mid-size Metris. If these are your wingtips, if this is your gourmet latte, then these are your vans. Vans for professionals. Strictly professionals. Best commercial van residual value according to ALG and starting at just $25,995. Mercedes-Benz. Vans. Born to when you come to Relief Windows, your experience starts here. Or here. Then we come to your home. We measure twice. And then we bring custom windows to your home. We remove your old windows. Install your new windows. Clean our mess. And we make sure you're completely satisfied. And all of this before you pay a dime. And at Relief Windows, our number one product is customer satisfaction. Relief. Heater outages hurt everyone. Don't be a victim. Call Accutemp and schedule your maintenance check today.